that we can sit here and talk to them we dialogue, we run the law here and come up with some results and that's what we come up with here if we disagree with the decision that they made based on what they have to us then we can start talking about it about two of these yeah, pregnant children that are disrupted I don't think it's just yeah. It's a I'm sure it is. Uh, quite interesting conversation. Yeah, I, I don't think it has reached the, the point where we need to, to weigh the, the objectivity of the discussion. But what is not done properly at the beginning? That is a bigger action. What is not done properly at the beginning? It's not done at all. <laughs> and um, for some of us who have the opportunity of sitting and reading the many exchanges on the internet, they just suggested to us that the, the core of the discussion surrounding suspension. Mm-hmm. And uh, the suspension has nothing, little or nothing to do with 501c3. Mm-hmm. It has particularly what something to do with someone's ability to perform. Mm-hmm. And the suspension letter that was written that we saw on the internet suggested to us that that is not something that weren't, you know, someone being suspended. So if the issue that you're bringing before us, despite your numerous explanations here, we still have to start from the beginning. And starting from the beginning will require us to do it right. Doing it right would mean that you are a party to the discussion. We cannot have you presiding over the meeting at the same time telling us that this person did wrong. That doesn't make, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 an objective reason for, for, for some of us to, 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 to hold on to and to fall prey of. So a good thing for you to do, madam, mm-hmm. is to step aside. The brother suggested, and I agree with him, that either a clergyman preside over the meeting, and we are open to listening to you. You have these great issues that you can you can substantially deliberate on. And in my home, this is the body. We, we can help you to to to, to, to make the decision that you are, you 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 are you are you are capable of doing it right. You know. Thank you. Um, the gentleman order. Why is it that the brother say that the bull has the sole power to sustain or remove? But equally so, we consider the action of the bull ultraviolet. That is, it was not done in line with the industry, it was not done in consensus with the community. The action was already done taken before you guys were watching us to inform us. You know, so add that you sat at the proper stage and sat right, then we will listen to whatever is going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. Uh, Mrs. Hayes, I think we're making a mistake here. Because apparently a lot of people don't know or don't understand what a 501c3 is. So, before we make a mistake, of the many mistakes we could make in the future, it will be correct. If you would explain what a power one c three is, because if we knew what a power one c three is, I don't think we'll be talking what we're talking here today. Because in a power one c three, you know that the where the power lies. So it will be all right if you are explain to the people mm-hmm. the processes about what OLM was prior to getting power one c three and what OLM is. Since you all got the 501c3, since the IRS accepted you all as a 501c3, since the federal government knows that you are a 501c3, and since the, you all, the five members of the board put their names in the IRS database. So you've got to let these, you know, the, the people know exactly where you all are. Otherwise, you start to make a lot of mistakes here before we go anyway. Okay, I think we all going around the same thing, saying, saying the same thing or what, or what. There are a lot of people that say that we should step aside and let a clergy run this meeting or, or someone in the community, responsible person in the community, right, run the meeting. There are some who are saying we have the right to call the meeting, and there are people who are who want to know more about the 501c3? We want to address your questions as they come. So let me let me just say a little bit about the 501c3. I think the question was where were we from the beginning, where we are. 
When I see him to, uh, to volunteer for the ORM, we had this 1986 Constitution, that's the only thing that we're working with, that we were working with. And that's the one that has been our guidance all through. When I came, to, came in as vice president, the first question I asked was, is this just a political organization for Liberians in Minnesota? I was told no. It, it, it is a non-profit organization. We are registered with the state of Minnesota. Fine, we got it, we registered with the state of Minnesota, but do we need to start getting some contributions for individuals when they contribute to us? How do they get some benefits? We've been trying to get a 501c3, but we cannot get it. And I said, we will get it before I leave as vice president. We got help. We got the 5013 application. And just to answer the question, somebody said five. None of the board members here signature is on that 501c3 application. The, the, the names of the person on the 501c3 application are the former members of the board. Our 501c3, you can see in the statement, the effective date of approval was June 2005. This board was not in place. We got the 501c3 approved. They approved, well, in the process of submitting the 501c3 application, we submitted a 1986 ballot. It was rejected and said that this did not have sufficient information to us, for us to act uh, uh, as a non-profit organization. The, the board took a, uh, decided to, to, to amend the Constitution. They asked the lawyers that were processing the 